Hello everybody, Senior Engineer, MBA and Investor and in today's video, I want to talk about Infilia Therapeutics Q4 2021 results, basically summarizing their 2021 year with a bunch of highlights that I want to take a look at for today's video. Now, before I jump in today's video, you guys know the drill, like this video, smash the like button, destroy that like button if you want other group people to join this space and join this beautiful community of CRISPR and genomics, you must like, you must share, and you must absolutely subscribe. So thank you so much for support, guys. Talking about support, I just want to give uh, my um, just a few thoughts. Again, not political channel. Last video, I sort of finished up with um, a remark I made on the president of Pakistan being in Russia and publishing pictures of him being with Putin. Uh, President Putin, and um, in fact, he he's still doing that every few hours. So it's quite crazy that uh, the turn of events, where you know, in yesterday's video, I made it, uh, and I sort of you know made it as a as a joke, sort of, and just a few hours later, you know, it actually ended up being a real attack from Russia to Ukraine. So um, just a you know interesting fact is Ukraine. Um, outside of Ukraine, the largest population of Ukrainians is actually in Canada. So honestly, like the biggest focus is on Canada right now, you know, on, on President, on Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, you know, Trudeau, you know, what what will he do? You know, what will he do for, you know, I, I think I, I saw a stat that about over 1.2 million Ukrainians descend live in Canada right now. That's the largest uh, Ukrainian population outside of Ukraine itself, right? So we'll see, you know, we'll see. It's really crazy what's happening. Um, I really do hope it resolve, you know, you, it's crazy that in 2022, and I made that remark few, few, um, few hours ago is that, you know, earlier this morning, I made that remark that, you know, when we, before we entered the 2020s, this decade, you know, we were expecting like uh, electrical vehicles all over the streets. We were expecting to be landing on the moon right on, on moon again um, and we were expecting to go back to we were, well we were expecting to land humans in mars and i mean the verdict is still out on all of those but instead what we got was the pandemic what we got was a bizarre u.s election what we got was what following that bizarre u.s election what happened to the u.s congress just after that in early 2021 first week of january um you know, what we got was more lockdown, more curfews, and, you know, some so much stuff going on, so much stuff happening, you know, including the martial law being invoked in Canada for uh, the Freedom Convoy, so whatever that happened there, and now it, it was revoked like two days ago. I don't know what's going on there, but, you know, and now obviously last night with Russia attacking um, Ukraine, I think that's just, uh, I, I don't know, it's just crazy that, you know, if someone told you in 2018, 2019, all of what I just said would happen within the first two years of that decade, this decade, um, I'm pretty sure no one would believe you, right? So I don't know. It is what it is. But I didn't want to jump into today's video, which is NTLA announces fourth quarter and full year of 2021 financial results. Uh, honestly, we won't go too much into this because we've been making a lot of videos on NTLA recently. And we've actually covered their latest partnership, but I just wanted to make this video just to summarize really high level what they've been up to. So again, they're on track to getting um, additional data for their phase one for NTLA 2001. Just as a reminder, this is in vivo and they got the first um, human data back in, um, in June 2021. So it's been a couple of months ago. Data came in really good. Uh, and they're expected to get really, really good. Actually, if you take a look at here, the, uh, their data is supposed to come in at February 28th. So this is in four days, guys. Four days, they're potentially going to announce further data for phase one, 2001, NTLA 2001, which we believe will be, again, breaking records. Again, it's all about that TTR protein reduction percentage that they can achieve, right? And phase one data that came in June was extraordinary. It was amazing, right? And it is in vivo, right? It's, there's, there are applications where in vivo make more sense than ex vivo. And in this case, whatever NTLA is doing, they have to keep doing it. It's just amazing what they're doing. We'll see in four, year, uh, four days what the data comes in for phase one, or additional data anyways. 
So uh, ongoing first human data for until 2002. So uh, don't forget, guys, they do have another program that they're ongoing and they're expected to get data for second and a half of 2022. I just think this year is going to be amazing. CRISPR. We're going to get a bunch of data. Caribou data is going to come in. Obviously, NTLA, we're going to get further data for CRISPR therapeutics. Hopefully, we'll get the first patient do dose with beam therapeutics uh, with their beam 101 program. So lots of great things to come this year. This year especially in the second half of this year. Nominate two development candidates for NTLA 6001. It's first ex vivo allogenetic CAR-T candidate for CD30+, and NTLA 2003 in vivo knockout candidate for liver ATTD, basically. And actually, NTLA 6001, we didn't cover this in, in this channel, so we might make a video in the future. Watch out for that. I'm really curious to dive into this one because I've been really looking into the CAR-T space and so many amazing companies entering the space. Obviously, the obvious one coming to my mind is Caribou, right? So we'll see what happens. Expanded genome editing platform through the acquisition of Rewrite Therapeutics. We've recovered. We saw that article where they sort of, you know, downplayed prime editors, specifically prime medicine, and they basically uh, boosted this acquisition. We made a video on it. Check our video catalog. Brought in future pipeline with ONK Therapeutics. Um, which we also made their, a video on this latest partnership. Sparing Vision, which we also made a video a few months ago. And uh, Kiverna Therapeutics, uh, beautiful partnerships. This is what I expect for a company that's publishing phase one data for in vivo, validating its technology, validating its status in the CRISPR space. Entered in the lease agreement to build a GMP manufacturing facility to support production of its CRISPR-based therapies. So I made the same type of remark for Caribou, right, which they actually entered into a 10-year agreement just recently, earlier in January of this year. Um, my The biggest question I have is, if they didn't believe themselves in the company, why would they ever, you know, lease a uh, these types of facilities, right? You got to remember these lease agreements are the minimum five years. Like in Caribou's case, that was 10 years, right? So these are long-term leases, right? What is the point of leasing that if you're not even confident about, you know, going public or in terms of, you know, your commercial, potential commercial drug based uh, with CRISPR? You know, if you don't believe in it, if you don't believe that there's a future in it, why would you ever lease it? Just keep, just keep doing this in lab, just attract foolish investors and just pump your stock up and just dilute your stock and cash out, right? But that's not what's happening with right? NTLA. That's not what's happening, right? The publishing data, the building partnership, they're acquiring companies with their cash in the balance sheet. And they're actually, you know, entering into lease agreement to, you know, acquire these uh, facilities where they can actually go commercial at some point, right? We believe that the first commercial FDA drug when it comes to CRISPR will be in the early part of 2023. We know that from CTA 001. All eyes are on that program with, within the CRISPR space, but whatever CRISPR, um, whatever NTLA is doing here is just amazing. I just love it. I think their CEO, you know, John Leonard here, some comments here. We began 2022 with a strong momentum, executing our strategic priorities for the advancement of our CRISPR-based pipeline platform. Right, so nominate two new development, NTLA 2003, 6001. Notably, we are looking forward for sharing additional data from the landmark study of NTLA 2001 next week. This leadership gets the job done. I've always said about NTLA, I've always been seeing it. So shout out to NTLA, shout out to all investors and stakeholders involved. I think it's amazing what they're doing. There are a couple of other uh, remarks from their release. I won't go over their financials are looking good. I'm not even going to go over that, but look out for that phase one additional data next week, guys. This is where all eyes are on that on Monday next week, February 28. It's going to be a huge day for CRISPR, huge day for NTLA. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you guys think about NTLA 2001, NTLA 6001, NTLA, any of these programs, or just talk about the company or about this earning release. Let me know what you guys think about the future of this company. Like this video if you found value. Subscribe if you're not. And shout out to Ukraine once again. Thank you so much for watching and have a beautiful night. Thank you.